Hey everyone, I just wanted to uh, post a little video here. I had a request from class in the past couple of weeks about uh, some of the techniques that I had covered uh, in regards to some photoshopping. Um, while this is generally outside of my realm of, uh, of tutorials uh, in that I normally do 3D stuff, you know, my, my 2D skills are not as fantastic as uh, a lot of artists I've seen out there, but I thought I would share um, with you some of the, the things that I had covered in this past class um, in regards to uh, it, first here looking at adding some color to a grayscale image um, kind of doing a, a shorthand of, uh, of a paint job on this if you will um, so what you're looking at uh, that I have open here is a, uh, a, on, a model sheet that I'm going to be doing for the uh, the concept of a character and uh, I wanted to go through and uh, and add some color to this I've got some you know grayscale that's already been laid down trying to capture some of the uh, the form of the uh, the shapes that are here um, I've got this you know blotted out in uh, in five different layers here the first of which is just my flat white background layer on top of that um, is the grayscale paint job, which you can see is just really, really transparent here. Uh, this is in it on its own, and it laid on top of that white layer. Um, it's a multiply layer as well, so it is just going to be darkening that background layer. Above that is then my line work, um, which is essentially just the, uh, the drawing that was shaded, um, giving me the, uh, the forms that I wanted. Um, on top of that was a uh, highlight layer. Uh, because my uh, my line work is multiply and my rendering layer is a multiply, uh, I wanted to be able to go in and just hit the highlights in her eyes a little bit further. Um, and so I added just another layer with that on top. Uh, and then finally, I've actually got another layer on top here called cost, uh, costume. And uh, this is eventually where I'm going to be um, concepting out what I want this character's costume to look like. Um, and so... Uh, yeah, what I'm going to do now is, uh, is show you my process that I use for um, adding color here while kind of really taking advantage of the fact that this grayscale value is here. So the first thing that I want to do is hit Control, Shift, Alt, and E. And when you do that in, uh, in Photoshop, it's going to merge together all of your previous layers into a new layer. You can see it actually replace my costume layer so you do want to be careful um, when you do this that you're not doing it on a, la a layer that you want um, and so yeah so what this is done uh, is that this layer is a duplicate of the combination of all the layers below it so whatever was visible on screen when you hit control shift alt and e uh, together you will end up with a I merged version uh, I'm going to go and uh, and now remove all of the uh, the other layers. I don't want to manipulate them. I do this as a means of um, being able to go back to my drawing if there's something that wasn't uh, wasn't right. This is n a non-destructive uh, workflow, and so by keeping those other layers there, if you know something once um, isn't exactly right or something I want to change, I can go back and edit it. Okay, so uh, the next thing that I'd like to do is uh, I'm going to go and add a layer here. And uh, this is going to end up being my color layer, so I'll name it as such. And I'm going to change my merge layer to be an overlay. Now the reason I do this, if I were to go in here and uh, just do a little bit of a paint job in red, just to show you, so I'm on my color layer, and if I go and paint here, um, this should let's see, allow me to see right through this. And uh, now it appears that I've actually got these backwards. So let me try this again here. That one's going to be normal. And this one is the overlay. There we go. Uh, and so you can see what this does is it gives me the ability to uh, to paint on here. Uh, and because it's an overlay layer, uh, what I'm getting is all of the grayscale values from the, uh, the image uh, are all kind of pushing through that red value that I'm painting, giving me the ability to... Um, give me the ability to apply color uh, while getting kind of gradients and shading automatically from this image. So what I'd like to do now is just go in and uh, grab something in terms of a skin tone. Um, this character is supposed to be a uh, Aboriginal character from uh, North America. 
and so I'm going to kind of uh, take that into consideration here as I choose a skin tone. Uh, now you may be noticing here, this is an incredibly light color for a skin tone, especially for someone um, of Aboriginal descent. And so that is uh, not a mistake. I am actually just going to use this lighter color and uh, I can go and tweak it in after uh, into the uh, the value that I want it to have. I'm just going to kind of use this as a means of filling in the uh, the shape here. And so something like this. Now, I'm not going to do the entirety of the image here as a means of just doing a demo of this process. Um, I'll kind of just concentrate on her head and shoulders here. And uh, I won't need to go too far below that. Now, again, what's nice about kind of working in this way um, is that uh, while I'm getting all of these shadows and highlights here from my grayscale image, um, I also have the fact, uh, have the ability here to alter this color. So, again, this color is not exactly what I would want for a skin tone, but if I enter my hue saturation um, slider here, I can actually go in and manipulate that skin tone. So I can add a little bit of saturation and I can darken it up and I can even pitch the color one way or another uh, in terms of trying to uh, get something that's going to read a little bit more like uh, the tones that I want. Now you notice anything that was black in the merged layer here is remaining black and anything that was white in this layer like the highlight in her forehead here and the highlights in her eyes is remaining white. Um, which is kind of a neat thing. Now the next process to do um, is to try and push this just a little bit further. Uh, I, you know, I'd like to manipulate some of the colors that are here. I don't just want this to be a flat skin tone. Uh, it definitely looks really flat when you get that kind of thing going. And so I'm going to be using two tools. I'm going to be using the Dodge and the Burn tools here. Now Burn, if I go and do this, uh, let me turn this value up so you can see it. Burn will actually make things go darker and dodge will do the opposite and it'll make things go lighter like that so what this allows me to do um is allows me to add some some highlights and some shadows here using a couple of other tools um now i'm gonna mess around with my layers here a little bit and see if i can't get this to look a little bit better um in terms of the way it's being done um i'm just gonna go put this back to the way I had it with the uh, the merge layers, the overlay, and the color layer underneath. Um, and that's giving me, I think, the, the effect that I want. Uh, okay, so now what I can do is on this color layer, let's try and see how this works now. Again, I'm going to go to burn. This is going to darken things. So if I go and paint this in, you can see it does a really good job of kind of darkening those tones. And again, if I go to dodge, again, it's going to add a lot of brightness to the colors. So what I'll do is I'll start with my shadows. And uh, what I'm going to pay attention to here is uh, based off where I had placed um, the, uh, the highlights on this image. You know, I've got a light source coming in from the front, uh, from the side here. You know, based off just these little two dots in her eyes. Now, the actual image itself where I've shaded this, she's pretty symmetrical. And there isn't really a left or a right to it. Um, but it is kind of worth noting that in terms of her eyes, that's where I place things. The reason that's important is that I want to stay consistent with that. And so I can now go in here, if I just zoom in on her a little bit, and go into this. Uh, so again, if that shadow, that light is coming from that side, then essentially everything on her left side, or the on her right side, on the left side of the image, is going to be in shadow. So I'm going to start off with just kind of, and let me turn the opacity down on this to about 20%. So I'll go and hit something on the side of her nose here. Again, her nose will be causing a shadow to appear on uh, on that side of her face. I'll go pull this down just a little bit further. Uh, and then same thing here, so along her temple and on this side of her head, uh, we should also be getting some shadow values. Well, something a little bit more like that. And then as I move down here into the side of her face, I'll go and hit one cheek, a little bit of her cheekbone here, 
a little bit under the eye. And uh, while I'm painting, I'm trying to kind of adhere to the uh, the shapes of her face and the contours of what's there um, in order to make sure that I'm getting the value uh, that I want and the, the shapes that I want. Uh, so, for instance, this is her, her laugh line here, the nasolabial fold. And I'm trying to go in and hit that in a way that, you know, makes it appear correct. And again, I'm going to go and add some shadowing to, you know, one side of her chin. Um, I can go and add just a little bit on the inside of her eye here. And again, try and get something that is going to read as being the values you want. Now, I'm pushing this a little bit further than I actually want to, but that's also kind of part of the plan here. Um, again, as I have the ability with this color layer to enter the hue saturation, uh, you know, I probably want this. There's a lot of yellows in here, and so I probably want to pitch this back towards the, uh, the tan colors here. And again, I can bring that saturation up or down, and the lightness up or down as well. And so if I just go play with this and get something a little bit closer to what I want, that'll work quite nicely. I'll then go into the uh, the dodge and uh, increase my brush size. And again, I'm going to pitch this back to about 20% or so. And I'll start doing essentially the direct opposite now, where I want to now go and start softening these values on the light side of her head. A little bit on this cheek. I'll bring this right down the center of her nose here a little bit. If I zoom in a little bit. I can hit the lip. And again, on the side of her chin. And again, a little bit more in here. And uh, what's nice about this is that I'm starting to get a bunch of different values in here. I'm not just getting this, uh, I'm not just getting this one tone that I painted. But you can see I'm starting to get some yellows and some reds and some darker browns in here. And the lighter values seem to be going on the blue side of things. Now again, I mentioned that this was, you know, a lot stronger than I really wanted it to be. But the idea is that once you get all of this done, if you were to go to blur and Gaussian blur this and just bring your values up, a little bit in the Gaussian blur. This is going to soften everything back um, to the point that you end up with a, uh, a really clean, blended set of colors here now. So I'm just using my eraser to clean up the blur. Brought it outside the lines. And so I'll go and just pull it back again. Just using the eraser tool. There we go. Um, and so again, you can see that like a lot of that harshness is now gone. I'm not getting the uh, the really ugly values that were there. Um, and I can also use the uh, the eraser here while I'm at it um, to go and you know remove this from the eyes, which should not have that color and the uh, the teeth here as well. I go and zoom in and do this a little bit cleaner with a smaller brush. I can go and pull the teeth back a little bit. And uh, I went a little too far with this. I'm just going to pull her lips back to cover that value. And uh, and again, I can go back in. It doesn't matter what, what color I'm really using here. Uh, all of this all kind of works the same way. So uh, for her eyes being of uh, Aboriginal descent, uh, you know, I'm going to be able to go in here with a uh, with a fairly dark color. To make her eyes, you know, the value that I want them to be. Um, you know, and I can use this to also kind of darken her eyelashes a little bit. Just to kind of pull that out. And, uh, and the other thing that I would do here while I'm at it um, would be to go in and, uh, and add kind of a secondary light. So almost as though she was... Uh, she was properly lit with uh, three-point lighting. Um, you know, if I go and pull this back a little bit, mouth is really dark. I probably want to pitch that back in a little bit. Um, but anyway, what I can do here is right above my color layer, add another layer that I'll call lighting. 
Um, now I've already got lighting here from a primary light source in the color layer. And so what this is going to do is this is just going to give me a secondary light source. So if I go and grab something in a, uh, I like using a, uh, a nice cool blue color, something in, in, in the, you know, LED blue kind of value. And uh, all I'm going to do with this, let's turn that uh, hardness down. All I'm going to do with this is just go and highlight the kind of bottom left of her uh, of her features. So essentially anywhere um, where that light was coming in this way is the primary light. I'm going to use the opposing direction as my um, as my secondary light. And so this is going to hit any of these surfaces, you know, that are pointing down into the left, you know, the underside of her ear here, the underside of her nose, you know, a little bit of her eyelid. I can go and hit a little bit of her lip here at the bottom and a lot of this lip up here and a little bit of this chin and again I'm, I'm painting this uh quite a bit stronger than i actually want it to be um but the idea is that i'm going to paint it stronger than i want it to be and and again kind of tone it back a little bit with a blur so there's kind of that that brightened um blue value now kind of hitting her her head from that side and uh, again, I'm going to go into my filter and blur and Gaussian blur this and um, bring it back just a little bit. I don't need it to be that blurred out. And again, I'll use my eraser to just clean up the perimeter here. And so this will give me uh, the effect of a secondary light hitting her from a uh, complementary angle to the original light. Uh, giving me this kind of bluish tinge on one side of her face here and looking like something over there is lighting this scene as well. And then I would also go and add a third light. And this is going to be the rim light. And the rim light, uh, we'll just paint it in white. And uh, essentially where the rim light is is going to be kind of behind your subject matter. Um, and it's going to just barely crest the, um, is this not doing anything? Oh, I'm still in the eraser. There we are. Uh, the rim light is going to be uh, just kind of cresting the outermost of your shape. Uh, and this kind of serves as a, uh, a way of separating your subject from the background um, a little bit and giving it a little bit of a, of a highlight here. So, you know, the tops of the ears are going to get hit a little bit. Um, obviously, the top of her head is going to get hit. And then once we start getting down here to her shoulders, you know, there'll be a nice white highlight here cresting the top of her shoulders. You know, a little bit of her clavicle will pick that up as well. And down into her deltoids. And again, just to soften this up, I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur again. And, uh, and just soften that value up. And again, use the eraser to, you know, clean up anything here that had gone over. I can see once I delete this that there's some skin value down here as well. Um, but that's going to start giving me, you know, these kind of, uh, these, these three light sources here. Um, and I might even go in once I've uh, hit that rim light uh, with the blur. Go in and just add... A little bit more to the highest surfaces here um, just showing that that light is uh, is quite prominent there maybe go in with the blur tool and soften it up just a little bit to ease on that uh, on that transition um, and this starts to give me you know a pretty decent from this grayscale image um, you know now something it's starting to look a little bit more completed and uh, and polished in terms of color um, you know, and this this works with just about anything. Um, you know, I've only just done a singular value here for the color. But if I wanted to add, you know, any kind of, uh, of makeup or uh, anything along those lines, uh, you know, it wouldn't be hard to, uh, to add it here um, just in order to, uh, you know, sell it as well. So, for instance, you know, she had a... Uh, um, a, a touch of makeup on you know maybe she has uh an eye patch or something on one eye you know if i wanted to do this here i would probably do it in another layer above the color 
and you know I could go in block this in and give her this you know eye patchy thing let's turn the opacity up speed this up and so I can go and give her this kind of eye patch thing here now black is obviously a terrible color to be painting with but I can always go and adjust that as well so if I went and give her an eye patch or something like that um, you know kind of paint it on uh, I can kind of pull this back a little bit and again like you're still getting a lot of the the shading um, coming through this thing and uh, if I were to even go in to my hue saturation with this turn on colorize and just lighten this thing up a little bit um, you can see that I can actually make this thing any color and uh, you know it's still very much paying attention to what's going on with that um, that highlight layer or that merged layer you know the, the values are still popping through and so it gives me the ability to uh, to do anything like that with it you know kind of push it a little bit further and so yeah so that's anyway that's that's kind of the the quick shorthand version of uh, of how I do this um, with uh, with a grayscale image you know where you've already got shading and value in places um, this is, you know, my shorthand for going to add color just to kind of complete an image. And so, yeah, uh, I hope that was hope, uh, helpful. And uh, um, I will be uh, creating another video shortly. Um, I have a uh, second request that needs to be done. And so, uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll see you next time.